Hi there, Tim Bauer here from LiveVideoGuitarLessons.com with the practice tip of the day. This was for the intermediate player, and today I want to um, uh, introduce you to pentatonic scales. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to be skipping over all the theory about major pentatonic versus minor pentatonic and you know how to apply them in different situations. I just want to get us playing. I'll do a different video on, on the theory and all that, but th it'll make this video way too long and you won't want to sit through the whole thing. So let's just jump right in. Hop over to the website, www.livevideoguitarlessons.com. Under the study aids tabs, you'll see a link to uh, pentatonic scale charts or diagrams or whatever I call it. And, you'll, and I have PDF files, and you'll see things that look like that. Um, I have it three different versions. This is the one. I, on this one, I have the, the, the big strings, the, the fat strings on the top here. I have the reverse of that where everything's flipped over. People like, a lot of people like to read it that way, too. I prefer this format. But on the flipped over ones, the big strings on the bottom here, and I also have it in tab over there. So just have it in front of you. It'll make what we're what we're talking about a lot easier. And just pick the one that, that um, if you can work on the one I'm working on, that, that'd be better because it will be matching up better. But just kind of you, you can see the scale in front of you there. So just choose the one that works best for you. All right, let's pick a key. Those are all written in the key of A minor. And the way pentatonic scale works, scales work. All five of those positions are the same five notes. They're just in in um, uh, in, in different places and in different orders. So um, uh, the, if, if you want to play an A minor and you're looking at position one, that red X there is my, my key marker. So A minor, I just find, you'll notice that, that red X is on the sixth string. So I find an A note on the sixth string and that's telling me where my scale is going to be. If you look at that sheet, you'll see it's this. <laughs> Just real quick, if, if, I, if I wanted to be in a different key, if I wanted to play in B minor, I'd move the whole thing up too. If I wanted to be in G minor, I'd back the whole thing up too. And all those positions, it, it all shifts up and down the neck just, you know, as, as, you, as you pick different keys. All right, so that would be my position one. Position two, the red X you'll notice is on the fourth string. That's here. That's my key marker. And position two puts me over here. So, and that's, uh, you can see that off the scale there. So, um, and by the way, just a real quick note, I don't like, I, I use the red X's as uh, key markers for all the positions except position four. It seems to, for me, it takes me a little longer to find it this way. It's, it's easier for me to know that the first, in position two, the first note of position two, this note right here, is the second note in position one and I can find it a little faster. We're talking microseconds here, but it, it makes a difference when you're trying to play a show. So even though that, that red X is the correct position marker, I don't use that. I use this as a second note and just start from here. All right, position three, the red X is on the fifth string. Um, and a, an A note on my fifth string is gonna put me in the 12th fret. And you'll notice those, the notes on that scale are behind the, the position marker. The, on, on position one and two, they're, they're forward of it. This one is that way, so the, I, I put that's my, my, my key marker. I put my fingers down there, and I put the rest of the scale in around that. Position four is, is not exactly the mirror image, but it's kind of the flip side of that. It's the same position marker. It's that same A note, but on the other side. So position four is here. Position five is, um, well, I'll show you this in a second. So my, my key marker for position five is the A note on the sixth string, and I'm, I'm, I'm progressively working up the neck, so that's this A note. And, position, and, and this one, these are behind the key marker, too, if you'll notice on, this, on the page there. So this one is here. Okay, so um, what I was talking about a second ago, if I go up to the next one, the next one's back to position one. The, the, the key marker for my position 5 is also the key marker for my position 1 in the next octave. So it, it's kind of the same as like 3 and 4. Position 5 is kind of back here. Position 1 is kind of over here. So that same key marker for position 5 is the key marker for this one up the octave. Okay, so anyway, that kind of walks through the whole thing. All right, so um, uh, if, if you hit, if you're going to try to memorize all five of these positions at the same time, um, you need to hit it about 30 minutes a day, every day, for about two weeks, and that'll that'll kind of get it into your long-term memory where you can uh, where you can use them. 
Um, if you want to learn, you know, one at a time, that's fine. Uh, a couple at a time, that's fine too. Just w whatever study method works the best for you. Okay. Um, real quick, a, a little bit of quick theory, but not, not much. All right, so these are all, the, the nature of these scales, they're minor seventh scales. They have a, a flatted third and a flatted seventh, which makes, like, they're, they're all A minor seventh scales. All right, so you can play that over your minor keys. If you have a song that's in F sharp minor and you want to play uh, position three, so you find your F sharp note on position three here on the fifth string, and you're fine. It, and what happens, the, 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 the scales work like magic. They, every note, you can't make a mistake. Every note that's in, in the scale belongs in, in what you're doing. And you, you could spend all your time, instead of trying to find notes that work, you know they all work. You just want to spend time trying to manipulate them and make them sound good. Well, I hit an extra note there as a transition, but um, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you, you do that once you learn them, but learn, think of these scales as the skeleton, and then you can learn how to put the filler notes in between later on. We'll cover that in a different video. Okay, so the, the quick theory part is, and this is going to be more of a... It, it, it is this way just because it is this way, and I'll explain the theory later on. But if you're in a major key, what's, um, if, if you take, like say you want to play in this key of um, uh, C major, um, if, if, you, if you find your C, and if I keep play position one, if I play all the way through position one, I'm not in C, I'm in C minor. But if I find that C and back up three half steps, that, that puts me in the major pentatonic. So if I'm in the key of C major, and I play in the major pentatonics three step, three half steps down from these other all these positions, that that puts me in the in the in the right key to play along with, with the major. And what we're really doing, we're we're really just transposed down to our relative minor. The the relative minor for uh, C major is A minor. So I'm really just playing in A minor, the same set of scales, but they'll go against the chords in the um, uh, the, the C major chord progression. All right, that was probably too much theory. Be a lot more theory in a different video. Anyway, uh, so uh, keep your eye on that. And by the way, we, we learned these the correct way today. Um, one last thing. I know this video is getting too long. Um, a lot of your blues players and a lot of your classic blues-based heavy classic rock players, they'll play the minor pentatonic scale over the major chord progression. And a uh, rule of thumb is if, you're, if your song has three chords in it, you're, and, and say you're playing the key of G and you have you know, G, C, and D, those are your three chords, you can, you can play the, the minor pentatonic scale, the G minor pentatonic scale, even though you're in the key of G major. That's a little confusing. That will be over in the, in the theory thing later. Um, I'll explain that, but that, that's what gives it that bluesy kind of dark sound. And that's very, very common in, in those genres. So like if I'm playing, they're playing in something like D major, they'll go ahead and play the D minor scale over it and it'll sound very bluesy. So anyway, like I say, we'll cover that more. Keep an eye on the, uh, on the website. I have lots of videos over there about cool things to do with the pentatonic scales. I'm, I'm adding more videos over there every day. Um, there's a video over there right now that kind of explains how to, uh, you know, kind of the fastest and uh, most fun way to, to, to learn scales and put them together. You might want to take a look at that one so you can memorize them faster. But anyway, I can see I'm running a little long here. Um, thanks for, uh, for sticking with me through the end. I tried to go through that quick. Um, uh, thanks for tuning in. Tune in again tomorrow for another practice tip, and I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.